Hampshire M2. Newcomers to Robot Wars with that old dream of conquest. How do you think it's going to fare in its first wars? This is well, this is no, it's not a laugh out there. No. It's hard. It's strong. It is. The Nobody's big... going to give you any. You know, oh, it's his first wars. Will be no. nice. The big difference is we're going to be up against spinners. We don't see those on the live event circuit because obviously they're hazards with uh, spinning discs. So we've got a Vader in this fight, and that will be interesting. A highly engineered self writing wedge-shaped barrel with a very powerful flipper at one flip every two seconds. Fast and agile with top speeds of 20 miles an hour, but driver's nerves and the captain's backseat driving could be a problem. Roboteers, stand by. So the teams then, Shell Shock, John Richard Lewis there on the left, Tiberius 3, captain by Sam Smith on the right. Vader on the left-hand side, captain by Simon Latham and M2 on the right, Jack and Paul Cooper. In the arena for the house robots, there's Shunt with a bulldozer blade and there's Sergeant Bash with a flick of flame. Three, two, one, activate. Tiberius 3 making the initial move and Vader up into the air. Came crashing down, there's the vertical spinning disc. Shell shot, looks pretty. Up once again goes Vader. A little bit lightweight, perhaps. Trying to get the spinning disc into play. M2 with a flipper. This already an intriguing Robot Wars tactical battle between flippers and spinners and crushing beats. And Shell shot turned onto its side. Can it self right from there? I don't think it can. M2 with a little lift of the flipper. Now, what's happened to Vader? Has Vader been immobilised? Don't forget, Robot Wars fans, if the judge says he's been immobilised too long, it's out, and that certainly is out. Shell shot gone. The first machine in Robot Wars, the seventh wars, out of the arena. And Shell shot, and they've gone to Vader. And the flipper rules supreme. Six. M2. M2 and Tiberius 3 go through, and Simon Latham and Vader, they won't be getting the 20 grand top prize, will they? What a stunning fight. Off to a good start, M2 then. With Paul Cooper controlling the flipper well, shell shot on its side, move to the arena edge and out. Don't forget, two robots go through to fight again, two eliminated at this stage. That was the end of shell shock. And Vader followed very quickly. Good speed across the arena floor from M2, and then the flippability factor. What a fantastic battle! Shell shock is well shell shocked. Vader feels the force. It's just what you like to see a brand new robot tearing up the arena floor. M2 and Tiberius 3, they go forth. You're fighting the cat. You're fighting pussy cat. <laughs> I'm a cat fight. <laughs> Do you think you can take them? Well, he's very nimble and he's a really good driver, but um, we'll do our best, yes. I'm sure we'll, we'll have be a good fight. They are seeded. You're number nine seed, aren't you? They're seeded number nine. Are you going to take that seed and smash him round the head, flip him out with it? Why not? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Fight and talk from M2. They're going to take that seed and flip it out. I can try. Yeah? <laughs> what are you going to do to them? Try and eat them all over. <laughs> Stay away from the arena wall, because I have a very good flipper. Very, very good flipper. OK, well, good luck in there. And uh, any words you'd like to say to them? Have a good fight. <laughs> and you. And you. Any words you'd like to say to them? Yeah, I hope it should be a good fight. It should be good fun. Both good robots. Yeah. Good fun? Can't yeah. you say I hate you and I'm oh, going to no. kill you? Just beat them up nicely. Pussycats. Into the ring comes the very experienced machine, Stuart Barman on the left, Amanda and Roger, his parents with him. M2. Jackie and Paul Cooper up there in the control pod. In the arena for the house robots, the first time we've seen in this series, Dead Metal and Sergeant Bash 2. 
three, two, one. Debate. Flipper against spinning blades. Double blades in this series, as we've heard. We're getting a right flipping early on from M2. Twisting and turning. The Pussycat always lands on her feet, and the Pussycat has nine lives. Well, maybe eight now. M2 steering away to try and get that frontal assault, which is, of course, imperative for a flipping machine. Trying to get underneath Pussycat, which has a 10 centimeter ground clearance. That is high in Robot Wars. M2, very good experience being gained here, and a good show by the newcomers. There's Stuart Barmore at the controls of Pussycat. M2 being well driven by Paul Cooper. Jackie in there, of course, with him. Pussycat is causing very little damage with the blades, and all the work here is being done by M2. And Stuart had his work cut out with Pussycat. They're grazing and scratching, but not really getting to grips with M2. Oh, talons and claws of the Pussycat, maybe causing some superficial scratches, but can you see anything else? I can't. M2 looks sturdy. Pussycat tossed once again. It may well become a, a war of attrition, and when that happens in Robot Wars, sometimes you look to oh, the durability of engines, and Pussycat really in trouble here, the number nine seeds. They need to get away from the arena cycles. They have done. M2 on the surge. Redbot, get out of there. M2 dodging. Has Pussycat come back strongly? M2 on the drive. Oh, Redbot. Again, caught between a rock and a hard place. Pussycat trying to get in behind M2 as it sensed a vulnerable little patch there in the M2 armament. Side by side. Again, Stuart turning Pussycat away. M2 with a slam. Trying to get the pit release button activated. Pussycat on its side! Pussycat in danger! I don't think they can self right from there! They'll try and claw their way out of it, but... I think Pussycat are finished here! <laughs> Look at that! Looks like some sort of bizarre crab, and they have self righted Time call. Judges decide. Nervy time. Fantastic battle, far too close to call. We're going to have to go to the judges. You know the criteria, style, control, damage and aggression. While well, they're making up the minds, let's see the highlights. Well, an early push from Pussycat, but there you can see the power of the M2 flipper. In hard again. But for me, the most telling point of this battle is coming up right here. That, for me, is where it was won or lost. The judges decide that. Well, the judges, they've made the decision based on style, control, damage and aggression. And the ninth seeds have gone out. The winners are M2! You put the ninth seed out. I know. I'm shaking more now than I was before the start of the fight. <laughs> In the first round, you put two robots out of the arena. Yeah. You tried to get them out. You couldn't yeah. quite make it. No. Powerful flipper, though. Yeah, I was counting the flips. We, we got up to 20, and uh, we did th about 35, 36 at the end of the fight. Mm. And we, we thought, God, we have to save a few, otherwise we're just never going to get him out. And mm -hmm. he's a, such a slippery customer. He is. He's <laughs> difficult to get hold of, isn't he? Yeah. And even when you push it, it's sort of like it kind of rolls around the he side. He just coming back. just comes back for more. Yeah, yeah. But he's got nine lives, you see. I know, yes. yes. Um, he's used a few this time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've taken a bit of damage there, though. Yeah. Um, is, is, is it all superficial? I think so, yeah. yeah. Just a few scratches, nothing much. <laughs> Bit of paintwork, that's a, that's a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, go hell for leather for M2! There it is, that M2, the newcomers against the more experienced Tiberius 3, and Jane's in the pits with the M2 team. <laughs> What's going to be your tactics in this final? Well, I think what I've got to do is get the first hit in, get him on his side, because his hydraulic, his self-writing is extremely slow. So once he's on his side, then I've then hopefully got him, push him to the side wall and out the arena. M2. 
two. With the formidable flipper, the team Jackie and Paul Cooper look very, very impressive. Tiberius three. Hoping to do to M2 what they did to Rhubarb, but Sam Smith, the driver, there on the left. M2's a tougher machine, I can tell you. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots. Oh, hello, Growler. He's our pet pooch. And Sir Killalot, he's our, um, our nightmare. Three, two, one. Now comes Tiberius three. M2, by far the quicker machine. Twice the speed, actually. 20 miles an hour top speeds compared to 10. The aim of the flipper was wildly off mark there. And Tiberius three has got to grips with M2. Oh, look at that. It's almost as if it's melting it away. That is vicious. That really is a strong attack, and they have done to M2 exactly what they did to Rubar. And the newcomers here in peril. Can Tiberius 3 release that pit? Get them down and out. Can M2 somehow get themselves off the horn of an island? the pit release. You can see the pit has descended. And Paul Cooper knows he's in trouble here. What can he do? Does he just pass on some information to Jackie up there with him? Ah, a little bump. Is that shaken loose the grip of Tiberius 3 as Growler comes in, as he's entitled to, in a corner patrol zone. And M2 is working itself steadily, ever so steadily and slowly away, is it? No! Tiberius 3 again. It's a bash in. That's the flipper of M2. They're trying to release themselves. I think they're trying to basically flip, flip, flip and, and shake the crushing beak, the claw, if you like, of Tiberius 3 away. In goes to kill a lot. Is M2 still mobile? The ref bot might have to come in here and have a look. Yes, it is. Oh, definitely so in a way. Well, has this heat final turned on that, I wonder? M2. As Tiberius 3 comes in again and looks to get a grip. Oh, and M2 has flipped it. That is unbelievable. M2 down and out, surely, we thought. And they have flipped Tiberius 3 and again. And it did turn on that release for M2 in the CPZ. And Tiberius 3 in all sorts of trouble. Now they're OK. Oh, no, they're not. And they're out, Tiberius 3. What an amazing heat final. They were absolutely in control. Cease. But from masterful control to mayhem and defeat by M2. What a turn up for the books. What a comeback. M2 through to the Serie semi-final. Talk about coming back from the dead. I know, I know, that was, even, that was worse. You were out of the game, weren't you? Yeah. Well, when we were in the corner, we thought, well, that's it, you know, we were sort of giving up, but, uh, yeah, that one chance to get out, and that was it. And, I mean... Well, you were helped by the house robots. Well, that was actually the idea. I knew I had more power than he had to actually get us into the pit, so I tried to maintain ourselves in the CPZ, and yeah. let the house robots get involved and try and break us free. Because once I was broken free, I had a second chance, but until then, I knew I had to get the first hit in on them and get them over, and I failed to do that. Yeah. So I was waiting for a second chance, and I was waiting for the house robots to break us up in the CPZ. It's a very it's a, clever tactic. It was the only way, it was the only chance I had. Well done. It's nice to have you on Thank board, you. Robot Wars. You're fine, Robot Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, big it up for M2! From Totten in Hampshire, M2. Has enough power to break the M2 motorway speed limit. You are fighting Atomic. Yeah, another flipper. Two flippers, so many flippers, yeah. so little time this year. Should be some great somersaults. Should be some great yeah. ones. They are very powerful. Have yeah. you seen them in action? Yes, we saw them in their last fight. Yeah. What do you reckon? What's the take that's going to be then? Uh, basically, flippers, all you can do is outmanoeuvre them and, uh, and flip them around and see, you know, see if you can get them. If they take longer to self-right than we would, uh, we can self-right quite efficiently. How many seconds does it take you to self-right? Uh, that's the man. Well, 
about two seconds normally. It's all right. Yeah, but one of the advantages we've got over them is that we've got a lot more flips than they've got. So if we can get them to run out of gas, then we've got them. Can flip in attacking mode every two seconds as well. Has top speeds of 20 miles an hour. Very easy self-riding machine. It's almost a full body flipper. Roboteers, stand by. Very close between these two teams, Paul and Jackie Cooper in the M2. And the Atomic team, Stephen and David Bebb and Paul Francis, the weapons operator. In the arena for the house robot, Sergeant Bash with the flamethrower. Matilda with the tusks and the flywheel. Exactly. Three, two, one. Activate. And off we go. This to complete our round two lineup in this, the second semi final. M2 self writing, atomic pressure rising, using up that precious gas. M2 dodging. So they want atomic to miss with their flips. I wonder what David Bebb, the 18 year old driver of atomic, thinks of all that. Well, M2 look dodging. And they are playing cat and mouse. Come on, chase us, chase us. And atomic cutting down the angles. M2 rolling, that's okay, they're barrel shaped. Atomic is more of a, a bulldozer, isn't it? M2 has missed with a flipper. Oh! In underneath, roly-poly. And uh, Atomic's flip nearly brought Atomic forward and toppling over there. 99 kilos, Atomic. So too is M2. There we can see the weapons operator of Atomic, Paul Francis, a farm manager by trade. And shepherding M2 across the arena. And tossing M2 and M2 self writing. This is very tactical stuff out there. A very tight and tense. This could be crucial. Atomic needs to push M2 to the arena sidewall and then flip. The effectiveness of flipping is largely dissipated if it's in the center of the arena. M2 flips Atomic. That's closer. That's more dangerous. That's CPZ territory. Call it patrol zone territory. And Sergeant Bash was waiting to come in. House robots can attack in there, of course. Atomic, I think, needs to catch up a little bit on the point scoring, maybe. Is M2 running properly, freely? Or is it bobbling there? Is one tire punctured? I wonder. Let's see. We can get a better view of the underbelly. No, they look okay, the tires. M2 self-riding, but they're the ones now using up the CO2. They just bump away. They are rattled, aren't they, M2? And Atomic are closing in, and Atomic now for Mir on top. And Atomic has M2 on the sidewall, and M2 bounces. And rocks and rolls and dashes away. Look at the concentration. Two machines from the second semi-final will reach the grand final. For the losers, instant oblivion. No one remembers a Robot Wars loser. M2 perilous. Atomic has them in there. Oh, they need to get their blade down. There, and now flat. That's it. M2 gone. Atomic wait at the moment. Cease. And went for the final flip. They got them on the arena wall. Position them, got in underneath. Oh, that's good stuff. Well done. Whoa! It's named after a motorway, and M2 hits the road. Atomic, they go storming on! Well, um, I said you're named after a motorway. <laughs> Um, and you hit the road, and you certainly did in the end. We did, yes. Yeah, it looked it like you looked on top of it for quite a while, though. Yeah, he's, he's very difficult to get under at the mm. front. Uh, he was given us no opportunities to get around the back of him, so all the sides. So yeah. uh, there you go. You had him in the corner, you had him nearly out of, the, out of the arena. Yeah. Really cool. almost, I really thought. Almost had him there. You were going through. Yeah. It was a good fight. Well, we enjoyed having you in the war zone. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise the roof for M2.